vaccinated. You've you've gotten your uh, you've been burned at the stake already with the media, and there's nothing left. So if you should have a national campaign, uh, that that has to be a big deal. I think so. Um, in virtually every aspect of my private life has been, uh, you know, excavated. Uh, at least twenty or thirty uh, friends, including several uh, female friends. You know, I've been I've been single for all but two years of my life, Dennis. I've had a lot of relationships, and they all called and told me. L.A. Times called, and I was on the phone with them for a half hour, forty five minutes, an hour. Washington Post called. I was on for a half hour, forty five minutes, an hour. Nothing at all printed except for this allegation made by this one uh, former friend. You know, and Dennis, what I find interesting, oh, by the way, I I remember the verb that Tavis Smiley used. It was Ronald Reagan tortured black people. Mm. And and the whole exchange that I had where I went over all those numbers, by the way, he was also there with Cornell West. It was two against one, so it was a fair fight, uh, is on YouTube. Just Google Larry Elder, Tavis Smiley, and Reagan, and you can hear the exchange where Tavis Smiley, at the end of it, promised to get me the actual data, uh, have it on my desk, and that was a good 15 years ago. Dennis, the other thing, too, I want to say is is the landscape uh, when the last recall election took place in 2003 in California, which was successful, versus now is totally different. Uh, There's about 5 percent more registered Democrats than in 2003. There's 50 percent more registered uh, independents. Uh, And even the New York Times said California independents tend to vote Democrat. And there's a 33 percent decline in registered Republicans. So the whole landscape was very different than it was 2003, yet as far as as the replacement votes are concerned, I got about the same percentage as did Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I never starred as a Terminator. No, you just start, you start <laughs> as, a, as a candidate. So, okay, I, I, in addition to the vaccination theory, I have another one. Mm-hmm. They say that you're a talk show host, so you don't have experience for uh, a big office like a governor of the biggest state in the country. Right. My theory is that is it's the single best experience you could have had as a talk show host. It gave you the time to master every issue. Well, I, I agree with that. Also, I'm a small business owner, and my business was not bankrupted. It didn't liquidate it. I sold it, and it kept going on for years. Uh, and I think that many of the people who are making laws in Sacramento for us have never even run a hot dog stand. Uh, but, you know, Gavin, Gavin Newsom has all sorts of experience. He was two-term governor of San Francisco. Uh, he was eight uh, years uh, as lieutenant governor and two years governor. And look what we have. We have rising crime and rising homelessness. Uh, we have a decline in the uh, quality of public education. People are leaving California for the first time in 170 years' history. Rolling brownouts because of the failure to adequately invest in our energy grid. Uh, we got a water shortage because of the same kind of the problem with our in, in water infrastructure. And bad forest management. This guy has all sorts of, uh, of experience. And when he ran for mayor in San Francisco in 2004, he promised to clean up that city's homelessness problem in 10 years. That would have been 2015. Have you been to San Francisco recently? And Dennis, I've been asked many times, okay, what, what, can, what, what, what does it take in order for all these issues you and I have just now mentioned for Californians, including Democrats uh, and independents, to rethink their hostility towards the Republican Party? I have the, uh, an R at the end of my name, and Gavin Newsom, and Barack Obama, and Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren, all in their commercials referred to this as a Republican takeover, indicating that the Democrats have such a visceral dislike towards Republicans, they'll ignore crime, homelessness, all the other issues. And I thought about something that Gold in My Ear uh, said, or, 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 or anyway, the quote was attributed to her. She was asked about the Palestinian-Israeli problem and, of course, what I call homicide bombing. The other people call them suicide bombings. She said, this problem is going to continue, you know the quote, as long as Palestinian mothers hate Israeli Jews more than they love their own kids. This problem in California is going to continue as long as California Democrats and independents hate Republicans more than they hate the rise in crime, more than they hate the homelessness problem, more than they hate the fact that the average price of a home in California just hit $800,000, dollars one 150 percent above the national average, more than they hate the fact that people are leaving California, rolling brownouts, bad forest management, and so forth. As long as you hate Republicans more than you hate those problems, we're going to have these problems. See that? I mean, now you know, folks, there are so few people who speak this eloquently about about the issue. That is, that is exactly right. I have a question uh, that, uh, well, a preface here. You mentioned all the, the women that you have had some relationship with called by the 
uh, Washington Post, called by the L.A. Times, and they reported nothing. Right. So uh, while you and I have had a relationship, it's different. <laughs> so <laughs> they, I, but, but it has been very close. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I kept getting questions from papers, because I only do interviews by email. And uh, they printed nothing. Yeah. I wrote back pages, <laughs> but they yeah. got nothing negative, so there was nothing worth reporting. Michael Horn, who served as my agent for a number of years, he's uh, Jennifer Horn's uh, father, was on the L.A. Times uh, twice for an entire hour. They printed absolutely nothing. You know, I'm reminded of a Saturday Night Live squ- uh, uh, skit. It was about the uh, the Salem witches, and, and one was being prosecuted. And the prosecutor stands up, and he's got this big, thick, about an inch thick of papers, and he's looking through them, and he's tapping them and folding them, getting them all and sorted. And his opening statement is, he takes his arm, he points to the woman and says, Witch! And that's it, and sat down. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, we're going to be back in a moment. I, I want to ask Larry. Larry was it was a big one. That was Larry Elder comes out for reparations for slave owners. We'll find out exactly what Larry Elder did say in a moment. <laughs> 